I'm making this.
Lord, we thank you today for your goodness, for your mercy. Thank you for your love, for loving us when we were quite unlovable people. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you.
Amen. 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 Come on, somebody can say amen. amen. Oh, praise ye the Lord. I like the song. It says, rejoice in his word. Ye angels of light, ye heavens adore him by whom you were made and worship before him in brightness array. Thank God. At this time, we're going to have the presentation of the flags, United States of America and St. Vincent and the Grenadines by South Rivers United Progressive Organization. Let's remain standing.
may be seated. At this time, we will have the welcome and opening prayer by Pastor Maurice Kisiko, or Pastor Q. Amen, amen. God is good? No, I didn't hear that. God is good? No, no, no. I'm about to hear something. God is good. And all the time. Now I can hear people of God speaking like they are alive in the house of our Creator. Amen? I know it can be intimidating sometimes to be in certain places. But you know what? There's nothing to intimidate you here. This is your safe space. It's a safe sanctuary for all of God's people. And in the presence of God, our creator, we are all equal. Amen? And so when I say God is good, and all the time, amen, amen. It is my distinct honor Distinct means it is the honor of nobody else but moi in French, <laughs> me. I have been blessed, I have been privileged, and I feel so humble at this moment to have been asked to offer the welcoming words to all of you into this, the house of God which makes it the house of all of us. Because the house of your parents is your house. And just like the uh, 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 Hispanics say, mi casa, I didn't hear that, mi casa, yes, my home is yours too. And so on behalf of the people of St. Mark's United Methodist Congregation, and on my own behalf, and all the leaders in this church, we are so happy and so glad to welcome you home. This is exactly where you belong. This is not my personal home, you know. So even if I wanted to, I can't stop you from coming here. Because this is the house of all of us because it's the house of our heavenly parent. Amen? Look at someone and say, this is my home. Because it belongs to my father. Amen. Amen. I am so grateful to my friend and my brother Friday. Could you stand, brother Friday? Yes, could you put your hands together for this man? Amen. Amen. Yes. He is one of a kind, and if you want things to go right, ask him to engineer the leadership. It is, is going to come the right way. Thank you. We appreciate you. Appreciate you. Amen. Amen. And so on behalf of the people of this congregation and all the leaders of this organization, it is my distinct honor again to welcome all of you and to welcome in particular Her Excellency Luan Jill Christ, the Ambassador of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the United States of America. Could you put your hands together for her? Amen. Amen. As well as Her Excellency I, Rhonda King, Ambassador of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, to the United Nations. Please put your hands together. Amen. Mr. Randy McIntosh, 
Consul General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the United States of America, please. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jeremiah Hyacinth, the Consul General of St. Lucia, could you please welcome and participate? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Olson Dalloway, the Consul at the Consulate Office of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, please put your hands together to welcome them. Amen. Amen. I welcome all the clergy members of different congregations who are here gathered. I welcome all my sisters and my brothers. Like I said, mi casa, mi casa. Thank you. And now, for the opening prayer, I would invite us to stand. You have been rushed so much. Rush yourself to get here. Those of you who are drivers, worry about parking. And those of you who are leaders and organizers, rush your mind, worry, am I going to get it right? Are people going to show up on time? Is everything going to be all right? May I invite us for a second of personal breath. Just take a breath. Inhale and exhale. Let's do it one more time. Inhale and exhale. When you inhale, let the Spirit of God come into you. And when you exhale, let everything that stresses you up go away at this moment. You want to be focused as to be able to enjoy this moment in the house of your heavenly parent. Amen? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh Lord, you are so magnificent. You are awesome, oh God. You are truly good, and only you are good. No one else but you. We have come to honor you, to thank you, and to celebrate you, oh God, the creator. For such a beautiful island, a nation, equipped with people, with gifts and talents, and beauty and gorgeousness, inside and out. The people and the nation, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and in fact, all of the people, beautiful people of the island, the Caribbean islands. Lord, as we have gathered today, let no one be jealous of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. For today, today and at this moment, we are here to honor you, to praise you, to worship you for this particular nation, this particular island, its leaders, both back at home and here in the United States and elsewhere in the world, its children scattered around this globe, especially those who are here in the United States, particularly those who are here in your sanctuary. Lord, we have come. You know we have issues, personal, family, work-related, community and nation in general. That's the reason why we are here. Lord, we know that unless we come unto you, we can't make it. Unless we invite you in, we aren't going to make another successful stay. Unless we have you evolved in the leadership to inspire us, to encourage us, to comfort us, and to strengthen us, we cannot make it. Therefore, we are here, O oh God, to worship you. Every speech, every intervention, anyone who plays any role in this service and in the fellowship to follow, we pray your blessing. We pray your anointing. We pray your deliverance. You pray, we pray for your salvation to be experienced, felt, and we want to enjoy ourselves in this moment 
so that it cannot just be a tradition that we do every day, every year, we gather in the name of this wonderful nation. Let today be different. Let today be a moment for anointing, blessing, and for something special and extraordinary to be noticed, experienced, heard out of everyone who intervenes. For you are God and you are in this place. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Q. Before we do the next hymn, we are actually gathered here this afternoon to celebrate 43rd birthday of anniversary of independence for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are going to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear SVG. Come on, we can do better than that. Happy birthday. No, no, one more time. Let, let me tell you, when I go to a birthday party, we turn it up. This is our nation, 43 years old on Thursday. We have a, a lot to celebrate. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Put those hands together and let's give St. Vincent and the Grenadines the beautiful gem of the Antilles, the Caribbean you're looking for, a rousing happy birthday celebration in Jesus' name. And the hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. First reading, Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, verses 17 through 21, being read by Deanna Grant. Following her 
would be a Johnny Liverpool reading, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 8 through 16 in that order. from Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 to the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome who is not partial and take no bribe, who execute judgment, justice for the orphan and the widow and who love the stranger, providing them with food and clothing. clothing. You shall also love the stranger for you are stranger in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. Him alone sh you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast. And by his name you shall swear. Verse, verse 21. Here is your praise. He is your God. Who has done for you the great and awesome thing that your own eyes have seen. This is the word of the Lord. reading from Hebrews chapter 11 verses 8 through 16. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he is when, which he would receive as in inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of the promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the herds with him of the same promise, for he waited for the city which has been foundation, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to convince seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, just because she judged him faithfully who had promised. There from one man and him as God as dead. Hmm? Were born as many as the stars, the skies and multitude and innumerable, as the sand which is by the seahorse. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar of us, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say this declare plainly that they seek a homeland, and truly they have called to mind that country from which they have come out. They would have an opportunity to return, but now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared them for a city. Here's the end of the reading.
Come on, put your hands together for a John. I can tell you, it's not easy to stand in front of a crowd. Good job, Ajani. God bless you. At this time, we'll have the next hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. And after the hymn, um, Rosalind Goodluck will come to the podium and she will introduce the preacher at this time. Let's stand. that I'm here to introduce our speaker for our 43rd anniversary of independent service of Thanksgiving, celebrating, celebration, sorry, who will be dividing the word for us under the theme, out of the ash we rise. We can all agree this theme is indeed fitting. Coming out of our experiences with COVID-19 pandemic, the volcanic eruption, and of course, Hurricane Elsa. Our speaker is a product of Christian education, guided by his family, nurtured by his church and faith, and defined by his academic and professional achievement. He is a graduate of Andrews University in Michigan. This is the world's second largest Christian food system that was founded in 1874 as Battle Creek College and the first higher education facility started by and is the flagship of the Seventh-day Adventist school system. And so it should come as no surprise to us 
that he has since been called to serve in various capacities, which include Christian education, missionary, principal, worship leader, hospitality, hospital clergy, support pastor, chaplain of the St. Vincent American Adventist Association, co-developer and co-coordinator of several religious programs, and many other services and programs for almost 25 years. Currently, he serves as associate pastor at the Victory Seventh-day Adventist Church in, in the Bronx, New York. He is happily married and a proud father of three healthy, wonderful children. In addition to his love for his family and his various ministries, he loves his home country, SDG, and does all that he can to support. He believes, and I quote, God will bless and keep us safe. My fellow Vincentians and our esteemed guests, I am extremely proud to present to you Pastor Dorit A. Stevens. It is a privilege and an honor. Friday, Tavern, for the for exercising some type of Exercising uh, faith and judgment in me, and if you understand uh, my background and where I came from, and uh, the, the, uh, the the circumstances under which I am standing here before you this evening, you probably would have thought otherwise. But I'm glad that God has seen it fit to bring me to this point where I now have the opportunity to be able to stand before our people, St. Vincent and the Grandins, and most of all before God's people, uh, to be able to deliver a message in such a time as this. Uh, so thank you so much, Rosalind, for your introduction, and I noticed that you added a I did not send, and you did your research, and I appreciate that. And uh, uh, past, uh, with, with the pro protocol being established, and permit me, because I'm still a little bit nervous, though I've done this several times, uh, I must recognize Pastor Mo Maurice uh, uh, Casico, did I say it right? And the rest of the clergy members that are here present this evening. I'm also going to point out one other thing before I start uh, my notes on my notes this evening. Um, whenever I see I run the king in an audience, I get a little bit intimidated. Here's why. And she doesn't know this. She doesn't know this. I've been noticing her for, for several years. You see, when she comes up here and she speaks with that uh, formal English and diction and so forth, and I realize that I'm half the person she is with regards to that, I get a little bit scared. But I tell you about this much this evening. I'm going to do what God has asked me to do. Uh, Council General, uh, good to see you this evening, and all those who are represented here from the various different countries as well. Now, I don't think I actually got the theme for this evening, but I did come with something prepared. So uh, the discourse this evening is captioned, Saluting Our Heritage, Building Our Nation. 
Can we say a word of prayer before I begin? Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us to this time and this place where we can celebrate again the building of this nation. And most of all, to celebrate the fact that you have brought us thus far. And so now we pray that as we uh, deliberate a little bit on this this evening, that you would be in our hearts. And may the message be received and lived, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We go to the book of Joshua, chapter 4, verse 15 to 24. I'm not going to ask you to stand as I read this. It's okay. Uh, but let me read a few verses here as we begin. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Command the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant law to come up out of Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priest, Come up out of Jordan. And the priest came up out of the river carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord no sooner had they set their feet on the ground, on the dry ground, than the waters of the, Jordan, of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at flood stage as before. Verse 19, on the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones that had taken that had taken out of that they had taken out of Jordan uh, he, he said to the Israelites in uh, in the future when your descendants ask your parents ask their parents their parents what do these stones mean tell them Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground for the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you crossed until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this, verse 24, so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the Lord, that the, that, that the hand of the Lord is powerful. Uh, and so that you might say, so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Come, see, live, laugh, capture the spirit and flavor of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Journey into the majestic mountains, beautiful black and white, and I heard golden sand beaches, the countryside, wildflowers, lazy rivers, and discover a true nature living. In a sense, it captures aspects of the Vincentian heritage. This is a rich and dynamic heritage. As we focus on saluting our heritage, we must note, it is an act of honoring and giving, it, 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 it is an act of honoring or giving quotas recognition of, uh, to, uh, of our heritage. Also, it is to show respect for our heritage. Sometimes we find ourselves focusing on our national heroes when we talk about heritage, but our heritage encapsulates more than the heroes. Our heritage is the thing, is, is, is the heritage are, are the things that give us an awareness of who we are as Vincentians. These are also, uh, they are also some, these are also some uh, of the things that the world has come to know us by. And certainly, if they didn't know us then, they knew us after April 9th, 2021. They became aware that we exist. Why? Because we had a major volcanic explosion. Unfortunately, it takes a tragedy at times to make some things happen. When we speak of heritage, we are speaking of custom, tradition, inheritance, legacy. Thus our heritage is our customs slash traditions that we grew up seeing as norms within the Vincentian society. <coughs> Before we can salute, respect our heritage, we must first know what our heritage is. Many Vincentians do not know their heritage. 
Therefore, it becomes critical that we know what makes us bin sentients. Our heritage includes some natural resources, music, lots and lots of music, lots of music, craft works, and if you don't believe me, go to Beckway and you'll see it, sports, places of scenic interest, vegetation, commodities, folklore, and our heroes. Vincentian's greatest resource being its people. Now let's trace, let's talk about our roots a little bit, just a few lines. Long before Columbus, Christopher Columbus got lost somewhere in the Caribbean and stumbled upon St. Vincent, inhabited by the Caribs, there were, there were a, a series of volcanic activities, a, 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 a several unfortunate wars um, in order to establish settlement. It exchanged hands between French and British, and then followed more conventional t lines of development. Amidst all this, the island maintained its natural beauty and seemed uh, destined to be a nation of impact upon whomever will visit it or whenever um, other people visit this, uh, this scenic island somewhere down there in the southern Caribbean. Now, let's note some of our responsibilities then. Uh, responsibility number one. The text before us presents Joshua crossing the Jordan River and the children of Israel. As they cross, God, as they cross, God commands him to get the men to carry 12 stones across with them. These 12 stones were to be a memorial for all the people in years to come. Joshua makes it clear in verse 22 that each Israelite present, present sorry, at the Jordan was uh, responsible for uh, passing on the information and I'm going to say that again, for what? Passing on the information, re, uh, the meaning of the 12 stones to the next generation. This part of Israel's history would always be remembered. This re responsibility was upon uh, a young as it was for the old as well. What have you passed on to the next generation about the history and about our culture is a question that we must ask ourselves. Just as this responsibility was upon the Israelites, so it is uh, the responsibility upon all Vincentians. Our culture, our history are dying as we have not taken the responsibility as seriously as we should. Some of our young people today do not care to hear about what the past, uh, about what happened in the past, or, or don't uh, um, think it. It, it, it has any significance to them. As such, the things, as such, the things that define us are no longer lifted up before the next generation. Oh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is in trouble, brothers and sisters. As we remember the past, it helps us to better chart the course for the future. So where are we coming from? Uh, uh, first of all, we are called a Christian nation. I'm going to repeat that. First of all, we are called a what? A Christian nation. This statement once bore true of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It was once a Christian nation. It was once a Christian-minded nation. I'm not saying that we're not somewhat Christian-minded anymore, but the, the essence is we are not as Christian-minded as we used to be. Today, we have become very secular in our thinking, and as such, godly principles are no longer lifted up for the next generation. Sunday and Sabbath schools were once a highlight for our children. Today, parents and children lay in bed until noon. They cry, I'm tired. This is the only day I have for myself. I have to wash my work clothes. No longer is this institution hailed among our people. My brothers and sisters, I dare you to say that this is the core reason why our young people seem to have no moral stance. 
Our country has come a long way since the pre-Columbian SVG. But today, our moral fiber is decaying. Today, we are in trouble as we seem to have forgotten the things that made us a strong nation. It, is not, it was not money. It was not fame. It was not politics. It was a godly principle that governed our people. Today, from the halls of the churches to the halls of parliament, we are being led by men and women who do not subscribe to the God of heaven and are therefore limited in their quest for building a nation founded on godly principles. Listen, notice that I didn't say parliament only. I said from the halls of our churches to the halls of parliament. So basically everybody seems to have been affected. The name of God is often mentioned, but do we truly exemplify principles, the principles that we speak of? Within the national anthem, we ask God to let our faith see us through. The most potent line of the anthem should, be, should not be looked over. Today, our people sing it from time to time, yet do not reflect on its lines. Oh, if justice and truth could prevail, the land of St. Vincent, of SDG, of St. Vincent and the Grenadines again. If truth was being ringed out and practiced from our church halls to parliament, we would see a different St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We were neighbors. The idea of St. Vincent, uh, of the idea of neighbor in St. Vincent and the Grenadines of and, uh, 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 in the St. Vincent and, and the Grenadines of the past went far beyond living next door to a person. To be neighbor meant we looked out for each other, each other's children and possession. Though this had, has not been fully lost, we are approaching it really fast. If you don't believe me, go and see. When God asked Cain and Abel, when God asked um, Cain for Abel, he asked God, am I my brother's keeper? And this sounds to me like the story that you will hear most often. And if you don't believe me, touch somebody's child or say something to somebody's child, correcting them even. And you will get a piece of the Vincentian mind with all the other stuff added. Well, to all the kings out there, yes, you are your brother's keeper. And that was our, S, uh, that was our SVG. Permit me to just say SVG. Today, your neighbor might be a murderer or a bad man. And if you say anything too hard to him, or anyone associated with him, you could be dead. Where is the brotherly love that once permeated our nation? Where is my neighbor? We have lost respect for each other. Adults have no respect for each other or the children around them. Our young people couldn't care less. As we sing, uh, uh, as we sing a prayer to the Lord, um, uh, as we sing our national anthem, there is a, re a request made to God. It says, "May peace reign from shore to shore, and God bless and keep us true." This gets to the core of a person who really reflects upon it, not because you have money. Uh, you're, born up, uh, 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 you're born in an uptown uh, family, not because uh, of, of what you can do for me. I scratch your back and you scratch mine. But simply because you are another human being and even more importantly, a brother or a sister. Fear for God. The generation I grew up in had fear for God. 
This was not being afraid of God, but simply reverencing God. Today our nation has lost its fear for God. There was a time when worship was, uh, when, when worship was uh, sacred in this nation. Church was a vital part of society. Today all kinds of things are done on worship days. It is no longer seen as a time where worship is given to God. Is this the heritage we are willing to pass on to the next generation? We must look back at where we are coming from uh, as we seek to build our nation, uh, our present context, sorry, and chart a course for the future. And if you don't believe me, look around and see how many 20-year-olds and under are sitting next to you today. Are we a dying nation? Dying church? The responsibility is yours to tell your children, next generation, what our great heroes did for the birth and freedom of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Vincentian people. As they seek to build for the future, they must be told of where it is. Is coming from. Our past must serve as a guide for them tomorrow. We have the responsibility, therefore, to tell them. Reminder number two. Joshua pointed out to the people that it was not their responsibility to tell the next generation, that it was their responsibility, sorry, to tell the next generation. It was, it was, it was uh, as this, it, wa it was as this was done that it would be a reminder to those who were there that day by the Jordan. By telling others, it would be a constant reminder to the teller that God, that Israel's God was good and that he was a deliverer. The reminder would help them develop a stronger foundation and belief in their God. Every now and again, we need a reminder of where we are coming from in order to help us to stay the, uh, on the track and chart a course for the future. Let me borrow a quote from Marcus Garvey who echoed, a people without the knowledge of their past history origin and culture is like a tree without roots. This statement is true in all sense, and it becomes more critical for all Vincentians to be reminded of our roots and be reminded of our heritage. Our values are often buffeted by other values that are not part of our heritage. We are in danger of losing confidence in who we are, losing an appreciation for where we are coming from, and losing sight of where we want to go. We have a duty to protect that heritage and to build upon it, to strengthen it, and to enrich it. We can protect our heritage, this heritage, we can protect this heritage when we know how we got there. We can protect this heritage when we know who we are, and we are not Africans, and so on, but Vincentians with African, Caribbean, uh, Carib, Indian, and otherwise descent. We can protect this heritage when we know where we are going. Let us be reminded, let us be a, a reminder, sorry, to the generation to come. But today, a reminder to ourselves as we seek to salute our heritage and build our nation. Reason number three. Joshua presents in this final verse why God, uh, 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 what God did for Israel, or why God did what he did for Israel. This was done so that the people of the earth would know that the hand of God was powerful and that Israel would always fear the Lord. Why do we need to salute our heritage? Friends, like Garvey opines, a people without knowledge of their history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. 
we are being called upon to remember our heritage so that we may never forget who we are and where we are coming from. Our responsibility is to keep this awareness alive and well. We must remind each other of this priceless legacy that we are, that we all share as Vincentians. Like Israel would see, their God, and reverence him for what he had done, we are also to lift up our spiritual heritage as a nation. The framing of our laws was drawn from spiritual principles. Our national anthem that the world and us, and, and we, and, and, and us we enjoy so much is a reminder of our spiritual heritage and dependence upon God. And we must show the respect due when we hear our anthem being played. I looked at the television a couple of times when the national anthem was being played on Independence Day in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And as the camera pans the audience, you can see people talking, people laughing, walking all of, uh, just up and down the place, you know, just doing their own thing. National anthem is being played. Of course, the officials are saluting or at attention while the crowd, so to speak, does something totally different. Building our nation. We're going to end soon. All the things that Israel, that Israel did to preserve the history helped to create a powerful nation. Adults who are responsible for the transmission of the history to their children, Today, as we build our, na our nation, we must know the values and principles on which our nation was built. Service. We must seek to serve each other. And I'm not saying that some of us don't. But generally speaking, it, it is a problem. We don't do it anymore. It is a core principle our nation was built on, both uh, the national uh, 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 pledge, so to speak, and song highlights service as part of our life. Godly principles. Sin, uh, uh, godly principles. St. Sin, sin, sin Vincent and the Grenadines is considered a Christian country. From its early beginning, there was uh, always a, uh, there's, there's always been an emphasis on the religious. We must not fail as a people to continue this great and important heritage. And as Joshua on this day challenged the, the Israelites to be responsible for the preservation of their heritage, and as he challenged them to remind each preceding generation to show the reason why God did what he did, I also challenge each person sitting here to be responsible for the preservation of our heritage. Never stop from reminding others of this great legacy we have as Vincentians, and give the world a reason why we cannot stop sharing who we are and where we are from. And certainly, never forget these words, the words of a national anthem. The, the words of a national anthem expresses so wonderfully. What air the future brings, our faith will see us true. May peace reign from shore to shore, and God bless and keep us true. I bid you all happy Independence Day. For that word, which reminds us that we definitely need to educate the younger generation about who we are. Thank you, sir, for that reminder. What air the future brings, our faith, our faith in a powerful God, our faith in the sovereign God will see us through. Thank you again, Pastor Stevens. God bless you. At this time, we have a rendition from early Williams King.
Excellent. Put those hands together one more time. For Earlene Williams King, the Lord is my light. Thank God. When you have talent and gifting like that, for the glory of God, for the glory of God. Come on, for the glory of God. As a people, SVG, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. At this time, we have the intercessory prayers, and they're going to come in this order. Um, for the government and people of the USA, um, Reverend Duran Grant, Trinity Methodist Church. Um, Pastor Bonnie D is not here, so Pastor Grant will do for the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines as well. And it will be followed by Pastor Ronald Bailey of Abundant Life Christian Church, He's going to pray for those bereaved families who have lost um, their loved ones. He'll be um, doing that prayer. And then it will be followed by Bishop Robert Yearwood of Elam International, who will be praying for the SVG organizations in that order. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Remain seated. Our gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for in your words you remind us that we are to pray for those that have the rule over us, that we might live a peaceable life. And pray for those who have the authority over us, 
Even so now we stand here in this anniversary celebration to pray for those that have the governance over us. And first we pray for these United States and the government thereof. That you, Lord, in your mercy and your grace would smile on us as the leading nation in the world. I ask you today to continue to give us grace. For those who are in the executive branch of government, we pray for them today that you will give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And you will give them the tenacity, the courage, as leaders in this world. Give them the direction, Father. Everyone is looking to these United States for leadership. And I pray that you will allow these men to take full advantage of the opportunity to lead us in this 21st century. So we pray for the president, that you, Lord, will keep him, strengthen him, and undergird him with the strength that only heaven can give. We pray for those who are in the Congress and the Senate, that you, Lord, will endow them with grace and with wisdom and understanding as well. We thank you for this nation, how it has been a beacon of hope for so many people. But even we who have migrated from St. Vincent down the Grenadines can find a place where we can ply our trade and work our skills and make what is considered a decent living. Thank you, Father, that you have blessed us in these countries so that we might bless those who are under our care, those within our family. I ask you that you continue to bless this nation. Continue, Lord, to help us to rebound from all the issues that we have experienced over these years, the COVID-19 situation, and even now the high inflation costs that many of us are bearing that is impacting the economy. But we know, Lord God, that we are not looking at what man can do, for we long that the just shall live by faith. And so, Father, we want you to know that our faith is in you. And we want you to take care of us. As we understand your word, the heart of the king is in your hand. And so, Lord, we put this nation into your hands and ask for your continued guidance and blessings over these United States. Continue to protect us. And even those nations that are looking for us to protect them, Give us the grace and strength to do that. We are reminded of the many wars that are being fought overseas. But these United States are trying to get a, a, a grip on, and trying to bring some sense of order. We pray that you would help in this regard. So thank you for all that you have done for us here in these United States and continue to bless this nation. Now we pray for those, oh God, our nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, our government. We pray, God, that you'll continue to guide our prime minister and those in the uh, parliament. We pray that you'll continue to give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that you will turn the hearts of those leaders to the people and the hearts of the people to the leaders. Somehow you will help us to come to foster a sense of unity and togetherness that they may guide our nation. We pray that you will help us, Father, through all this changing scenes of life that we have experienced, from flooding and suffering eruptions to the COVID-19 and all of the disasters that we have faced, truly you have been there for us because without you we could not have rebounded. But thank you for grace and favor. For those whom you have allowed to reach back and help, we thank you. And now we pray that you will keep our nation together, that you will watch over our country that you will protect us even as we are approaching this season of, of storm and, and hurricane. And we pray that for your divine covering over our nation in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that you will be the source that supply all of our needs 
according to your riches in glory. We ask you today to continue to guide our nation, even as we celebrate this 43rd anniversary. Oh God, how we are still young, but we need your help. We need your help because without you, we cannot make it. For the next years that lies ahead, Father, continue to watch for us and protect us, guide us. Continue to strengthen our people. We pray for the young people of our country, especially, Father. We pray against all of this gun violence that is happening all over our nation. We pray against this sense of, of unkindness and, 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 and all this behavior that, that seems to separate our society. We pray and ask you to intervene divinely in the name of Jesus. Turn the hearts of our people back to you. Change the hearts of our young people. Let there be a sense of brotherly love that flows through our nation. Begin with those at the top on down to the bottom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Protect our women. Protect our young children. Oh God, we pray that you will assign an angel to watch over our people. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for this we'll give you thanks and praise. Continue to guide. In Jesus name. Amen. Shall we pray? The Lord be with you. Heavenly Father as we come into your presence. One more time. And as your servant O oh God. We give you thanks for those who have preceded us in death especially those in our ancestry, in our various family lineages, upon whose shoulders we stand today. We give you thanks for those who made the sacrifices to prepare us for the various roles we serve in the various communities and societies where we live. We even thank you for the progenitors of our independence, men like George McIntosh, Sheriff Lewis, E.T. Joshua, Robert Milton Cato. We thank you for all these men who have preceded, and women who have preceded us, our teachers, our nurses, our law enforcement officers, public servants, and all those on whose sacrifices and work we are enjoying today. Father, we thank you for all they have done. And help us, O oh God, to be like them. To leave a legacy for those coming behind. We thank you, God, for those who mourn their loss. We thank you for those who are carrying on where they left off. We ask your blessing upon the land. Those who are serving now. And those who will serve in the future. Thank you for your goodness. Give us the strength to carry on and to remember those, those who have served. Bless us all together in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessing good evening. Greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Today, I'm going to pray for St. Vincent and the Grenadines organization. Shall we bow our head and pray, please? Jehovah Almighty, Father of creation, Father of redemption. Lord, I thank you for St. Vincent and the Grenadines organization. Lord, I pray for fresh courage that they may go on. I pray, O oh God, that you would win open your windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they have never received. Lord, I pray, O oh God, for strength for this organization. Lord, look up and down. Bind their hearts together. Bring them together as one. Holy Father, let them be an example before others. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Jesus of Nazareth, your only begotten Son, I ask these things as I lift them before you, Holy Father. Give them strength, fresh anointing, O oh God. Keep them in your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord, I pray. And let the church say, Amen. God bless you. Amen. At this time, we will have a hymn through all the changing scenes of life immediately after. We are going to receive our first um, offering with the song, The Right Hand of God. I'm going to ask you to dig deep, get those pocketbooks out. You gentlemen, dig deep in your pockets and let's give. It's good to give. It's a blessing to give and be a help. So we'll do it joyfully, all right? The Lord loves a cheerful giver. So at this time, through all the changing scenes of life, all to stand. ask us at this time to, we're getting ready to give, but turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor. Just turn to your neighbor. If you're not comfortable with shaking a hand, just give a smile, a wave. If you're comfortable with hugging someone, the peace of God upon each and every one of us. It's good to be together. Come on. It's good to be together. The Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. In unity. God bless you. At this time, we are going to receive the first offering. The right hand of God. As I said before, please dig deep. Let's give 
Give as generously as you can. And I would even go as far as saying, give the bigger bill. Because you can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. One second, sorry. Put it on the screen. Are you ready? Let's go. You can keep giving.
God my deliverer? Let's declare, yes, he is. with the volcanic eruption and look we're still here come on we're still here we're still here so we pause for a minute to just say thank you Lord because I want to say this and say it very clearly we can't afford to live without God in our lives and we certainly can't afford to die without him so what do we do we lift our hands and say what well, thank you Jesus Lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. At this time, at this time, we're going to have our president of Casago, Mrs. Laverne McDowell Thompson, and she come at this time with the president's greetings. Put your hands together and welcome her. she comes. Ambassador to the United States of America, prominent representative of the Organizations of Americans of America State, and non-resident High Commissioner of Canada, Her Excellency I. Rhonda King, Ambassador and prominent representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the United Nations, Honorable Rondi McIntosh. Council General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the USA and his wife, Mrs. McIntosh, accompanied by their beautiful daughter, Sarai. Council Alson Galloway, members of the Caribbean Corps, members of the clergy, Mr. Cyril Thomas, cultural ambassador and former Deputy Council General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Mr. Luxie Morris, Sports Ambassador, Mr. Crispin Friday, Chairman of the Church Service Committee, Executive and members of Cosago, President and members of all Vincentian organizations here in the diaspora, fellow Vincentians, friends, family, and supporters, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of our lives, and to whom we give all the glory, all the praise, as we gather together to give thanks, as we look forward to mark the milestone of 43 years of independence of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Thursday, 27th of October, this coming Thursday. Paul reminds us in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.18, that we must give thanks in all circumstances. He added that it's the will of God to do so, regardless of how difficult our circumstances may be, we can still find a reason to thank God. So today, we are lifting our voices, we are singing, we are giving praise to the Almighty God, and it is all because of the goodness of God and for his sparing mercies. My brothers and sisters, as we gather here today, we are thankful that we are able to observe our nation's independence in our adopted homeland. The Council of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Organizations, USA Inc., has without failure celebrated our nation's 
nation's independence for over 40 years. And I reclaim it because when, when the, the, the church service started, the very first year we had independence, it started on service committee. And from that committee, it evolved into what is known today as the Council of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Organization. And we are so proud that we can help to keep the history of our country alive in our adopted homeland. Now, we are stronger together by doing so in collaboration with the Consulate General's Office. We are even much stronger having the support of many Vincentian organizations in the diaspora. We owe it to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is the land of our birth. Let's keep our history alive. On behalf of Cosago, a heartfelt thank you. It is such a joy to celebrate our independence. When we think of our independence, it's all about our people, our nation, our loyalty, of course, our faith, and our pride. And, you know, we always talk about how proud we are to be Vincies. Let's think about it. What makes us proud? As I look around in my community and, and, and socialize and been able to, to mingle and have fellowship in one way or the other with my Vincentian brothers and sisters, I said, that's what makes me proud. When we can all get together, we get together when there are causes where people do not hesitate. So when we are able to get together and when there is a situation to take care of the needs in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we get together, we roll our sleeves up no matter what it takes us, that's what, one of the things that really makes me very proud. Knowing that we came from St. Vincent and the Grenadines and we did not forget about home. We brought home with us. <laughs> So we always do what we can. And that is what is nation building. At this point, I must commend you all. I must commend you for all that you have done when the SVG Relief Inc. conducted the, volcanic, the volcano relief drive. Your support was tremendous. And being a member of the SVG Relief Inc., meaning Cosago, along with other representatives in the diaspora, we rallied to our nation aid. And we did so overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly to, the needs and, uh, to the needs of our brothers and sisters at home. Let's not forget to love our country. Let's not to forget to pray for each other. Let's not forget where we came from. Thanks to all who have made this service possible today and to all our viewers who are joining us, whether on YouTube or on, or on Facebook, we just thank you. On behalf of the Council of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Organizations, Cosago, happy independence to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, happy in independence to our fellow Vincentians here and at home, and for all who are joining us for the first time, I would just like you to stand for recognition. If you Worshipping with us for the very first time at our independent service. Anyone? Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> Members from my church, don't be shy. <laughs> oh, we have them all. Thanks to General and his wife and daughter. Wonderful. <laughs> so we are growing. And we just want to keep that going. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. Please stand. Let, let me just remind you that we must continue to live in peace, in love, and in harmony. Let peace reign. God bless you. Thank you, Madam President. We're doing a second offering. And you may ask, why are we doing a second offering? But we are doing a ready relief fund sponsored by Casago um, for situations like we had last year. So at this time, the ladies are going to return with the baskets.
And I'm sure there's a $5 somewhere. I'm sure there's a 10 somewhere in a corner of the wallet. So we're going to ask you to, to reach out again as best you can towards the, relief, the Ready Relief Fund. And the St. Mark's um, United Methodist Choir will sing for us at this time.
church say? Are you in agreement? Amen. I like the song from the choir. You can't beat God's giving. The more you give to God is the more he gives to you. He's our source and we give him praise. At this time, I'm going to invite Dr. Olga Hudson to come to the microphone and to make the introduction. Greetings to the household of faith. Um, I have the honor and the privilege of introducing our ambassador. As protocol has been already established, I will give you a brief synopsis of our ambassador of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the United States, High Commissioner to Canada, and the permanent representative to the Organization of American States. Luan Gilquest has been representing St. Vincent and the Grenadines as ambassador to the United States of America, permanent representative to the organizations of American states, and non-resident high commissioner to Canada since 2015. Prior to taking up these duties, she was the chief education officer in our country from 2009 2016. Having been a lecturer at the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College and a teacher at two of the top secondary schools in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In the post of ambassador, she remains true to her training and practice as an educator and continues to promote education as a driver of economic and social development. Ms. Gilquest is a proponent of women's leadership and empowerment as key elements of inclusion, equality, and economic prosperity. Aware of the multidimensional challenges, including the effects of climate change and the global financial complexities which compromise national and regional development, Ms. Gilquest continues to speak to the issue. She is a graduate of the University of the West Indies and the University of Warwick. Please help me in welcoming our ambassador, Luann Gilchrist. Thank you very much, Dr. Husband. Good afternoon, members of the clergy, Her Excellency Inga Ronda King, Consul General Ronde McIntosh and his family, Consul also Dalloway, I'm sorry, Dalloway, Mr. Olson Dalloway, the President and the Executive Members of COSAGO and the president and members of other diaspora groups. Mr. Cyril Thomas and other distinguished members of the congregation. Ladies and gentlemen all, boys and girls, it is my pleasure to stand here before you today to make these very few remarks. I promise I'll take only three minutes and 59 seconds. And CG, I will not be singing. I must at this point, however, express my gratitude to the liturgist and the clergy and the choir and the choir master for such excellent songs of praise. And uh, Pastor Moray, je suis, je suis qui, qui c'est quoi? Moray, qui c'est quoi? Merci de nous avoir accueillis dans votre maison, dans la maison de Dieu. We are pleased to be here in your house, in the house of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Office of the Embassy and High Commission of St. Vincent and the Grenadines salutes and thanks the President and Executive Members of COSAGO 
for commemorating the 43rd anniversary of independence of our beloved nation with the various events, including the service of thanksgiving and in the case of the Consul General, Consulate General, the flag raising ceremony and of course the galas. We collectively give thanks for the many blessings so graciously bestowed upon us as a nation. We are here today because God has blessed us with the wisdom and resilience to survive the health, climate, and economic crises of the past few years, notably those of the 2020-2022 period. Let us pause as we remember and celebrate the lives of those who are no longer with us. And at, the, at, at this time, I refer to the intercessory prayers made on behalf of our dearly departed. We give thanks equally for the protection which has brought us to this 43rd anniversary of political independence from Great Britain. Our nation is firmly in its adulthood. Our stable and mature democratic institutions and the maintenance of the rule of law are evidence of this. Ours is a nation in which peace and justice prevail. Peace and justice is not simply a motto to which mere lip service is paid. It is a way of life for most and an ideal state which all Vincentians everywhere should aspire to achieve and maintain. From the 1935 riots to adult suffrage in 1951, our now mature nation has gone through many challenges. It has also seen many corresponding rebirths and periods of regeneration since taking its independence in 1979. I classify the education revolution, the housing revolution, and the current initiatives taking place at the court and in the health sector as regeneration. Many will recall that 1979 was the year in which La Souffre of Easter fame covered our island in thick blankets of volcanic ash. Shortly thereafter, Hurricane David struck, causing damage and loss. A few months later, however, we celebrated our accession to the status of an independent nation, responsible for our self-determination. Then. Free from our fetters, we began charting our own course politically in a world which was speeding toward globalization. As Vincentians, therefore, we have become used to experiencing the heights of joy and the doldrums of disappointment, yet we do not despair. The vicissitudes of life, especially over the past two years, have taught us to find fresh hope and not to succumb to despair. We did not and will not bury ourselves in the volcanic ash, nor in the ash of outmoded ideas and ways of being. Instead, armed with the elements which make us resilient, together we will rise. We will rise from the economic, social and environmental challenges and ensure that our nation remains the gem of the Antilles. We, the gem of the Antilles, comprise a nation of diverse peoples living in diverse parts of the world. We recognize that there are ties which bind us inextricably, first to one another and second to our homeland. These are racial, cultural and spiritual ties that remind us of our common shared heritage. And Pastor Stephen already indicated to us the elements of our heritage. These ties make us who we are and give us the assurance that we belong, that we are rooted. For this, we give thanks. My brothers and sisters, rooted in our heritage, and united by our love for our nation, let us rise and celebrate this 43rd anniversary of the independence of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Happy independence to everyone. May God bless us all.
thank you, Her Excellency, and Lewis and Jokes, for those words. I'm going to invite at this time Council Olson Dalloway, and he will introduce our first agenda. Put your hands together as you come. Bongi, a little bit to you. Pastor, thank you. Now, he, has, he had created there a tone where he put us a little bit in a tight spot. <laughs> Causing me to feel and to be scrutinized by the teachers sitting in our audience there. Mm -hmm. And before the excellency, the ambassador. Now, I'm really in a tight spot because my hands are trembling and sweating. And I further noticed too that her excellency employed a high level of the French language. However, I challenge you to. <laughs> I'll go on the grounds in St. Vincent and we're gonna take it one by one, man to man. And for those of us here this evening, I would say good evening to you all. Good night. How are you doing? That's where we came from. And if we cannot employ those language, it means that we are not Vinci. But each one of us here, we are Vinci to the what? Bone. Very good. Her Excellency Luan Gilchrist, Ambassador to the United States of America prominent representative to the Organization of American States, and non-resident High Commissioner to Canada. Her Excellency, Iranda King, Ambassador and prominent representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the United Nations. Honorable Randy McIntosh, Council General of St. Vincent to the USA. That's supposed to be Luther McIntosh. And his wife, Simone, the children. Consul General Jeremiah Hyacinth of St. Lucia. Members of the clergy, Mr. Cecil Cyril Thomas, Cultural Ambassador and former Deputy Consul General to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mr. Luxi Morris, Sports Ambassador. Mr. Kristen Friday, Chairman of the Church Service Committee. Executive and members of COSAGO. President and members of all the Vincentian organizations here in the diaspora. Congregants, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's good night, good night. It's really a long talk I have to do here now, but I have to try and find my way out of this tight spot. And I'm not going to be very long. I'm going to speak about a gentleman, a man of the soil, come from Calakwa, Calakwarian. Born to parents, that is Sydney and Cynthia McIntosh from Kalakwa Rongso, the street around the corner there. That's right. He has set his footprints, his footprints, all over the land of St. Vincent, down in the Grenadines tour. He started his professional career as an assistant of the University of the West Indies. I think that was on the open campus. Now, he always want to find a way out. So what he decided to do, he's not, he wasn't staying there, so he decided to become a clerk, a clerk that is, sales, sales clerk, and I think that was over at 
cable and wireless and courts. Mm -hmm. Then he stepped up the ladder and became one of those managers, a repossession manager. So folks, if you have anything, don't talk to that brother. Don't talk to that brother if he's from, if you have anything for courts. His thought, his thirst for success was not so easily quenched. Why? What did he do? Like I said earlier, cable and wireless, he became account executive manager and local enterprise manager. I notice he wants to step up in the lines of ambassador, but hold up, you can't reach this so quick. <laughs> you have two very strong ladies in front of you. You can't step up there so quick. So he was known as a brand ambassador. He settled for that. A little later on down the road, he joined the ranks at um, the radio station name. It's 705. 705. I can't remember the new name. 705, huh? Seven, NBC Radio, that's right, thank you very much. A sales manager, and what did he do? He was able to use his strength, his fortitude, and so he put 705 on a financially stable path. Congratulations to you, sir. All right. On another note, we always hear about, well, many of us here, we only know Luther. That's the only figure to St. Vincent. But uh, uh, up there, he's known as that too, Luther. One of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' premier entertainers. And if my memory serves me right, you know, I think he has a career of 28 years. 28 years career in the musical industry. Now, he boasts the ability to motivate people. To motivate people. And I can recall seeing him on television in St. Vincent. And you know what we used to do? When Suffer erup uh, erupted, I think it was in 2021, right? Start to get old. I have some gray hairs on my head. Luther, he took the forefront. Mm -hmm. What did he do? Well, seems like he was in a tight spot and he had to go and help out. So he went and started distributing packages. Packages to the needy and those who were in this place. Very commendable. And that is the type and quality of people we need to have in our midst, to be in the forefront, to roll up your sleeve, pull up your pants foot. You know what? At this point in time, I think I'm talking a little bit too much. When he sees Mike, he gets excited. So what I'm going to do at this point in time, I'm going to present to you the Honorable Randy Luther McIntosh. Step up, answer to your name, defend your title. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you very much, Consul. <laughs> now, I am not going to do like Consul and Pastor Stephen. By making it any excuse for not being an eloquent speaker as my Ambassador Gilchrist and Ambassador Kay. I'm not going to do that. I spent my entire life in the trenches with the people. I came from different realities different surroundings. I am going to speak the way I know it best. Today, I 
I'm here to celebrate and worship with you as my family. When I say family, I don't speak about the blood that runs through our veins. I speak about my family through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, as I sat and listened to Pastor Stevens, I was bewildered. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it seemed to me that Pastor Stevens would have looked at my notes. Because he spoke so much about things that I want to speak about today and things that I spoke about in the recent past. But that's how the mind works. Great minds think alike. And I am not here comparing myself to the learned gentleman. <laughs> but he spoke about our history and our inhabitants and what they had to go through from the Arawaks to the yellow caribs that came from the Orinoco Valley in South America to the first blacks that landed on St. Vincent from that, that famous shipwreck off Beckway to the emergence of the new race, the Garifuna people. I think about the Atlantic slave trade and what we went through. And as Pastor Stevens highlighted that we went through a lot. We say all this to say that us here today must be extremely proud that we are some of the most resilient people on the face of the earth. It is true that resilience that we must never give up. Now, as we celebrate our independence, I often wonder, what is the true meaning of independence? Are we truly independent? And every time that question comes to my mind or the question about any words that I may hear, I run to the dictionary, I run to Google. And Google said to me that independence is a state of being able to do things for yourself to make your own decisions without help or influence from others. When we look at our country being independent, it is a state of being able to handle your own affairs, to make your own laws, to govern your own people. The best independence, however, is to be independent-minded, be grounded, your values, and I must pause here because when we speak about values, and I said that I had the impression that Pastor Stewart looked at my notes. Because recently, I spoke so many times about our children and the values we impart in our children. And me being here for the first time living in the United States, it is blatant to me that our children are missing from among us. Look at the church today. Where are our children? I, I cannot say that I know the culture here in the United States and how it would have changed. But I know, and we all know, that in our day in St. Vincent, when your mom or your dad woke you up or wake you up on a Sunday morning, and say, we are going to church. The only thing you could ask is, what dress are wearing? What pants are wearing? What shirt I'm wearing? We need to bring our children along with us. Bring them. We cannot lose that patriotism. Keep them grounded. Let them know. Like the Garifuna people, we came from somewhere. And we must always remember our birthland. Now, I had a very interesting conversation yesterday morning or chat with someone. And I want to share it with you. Because as we celebrate here today and tomorrow, we'll be going to New Jersey to do our inaugural flag raising. And on Wednesday, the flag raising for the first time here in New York City, 
and the lighting of the Empire State Building in the evening, which I, I welcome everyone to come out. I woke up yesterday morning, and as usual, check our phones, see if we have any overnight messages, and a message was there waiting on me. Here is a Vincentian living here in the United States. And she was saying to me, um, good morning, Council General. Well, she addressed me as Luther. She said, I'm hearing talks about the lighting of the Empire State Building, building and I saw it on Facebook. She said, I'm also hearing talks that what are we doing this for? Is it just to the pride? So she said she is going through a rough time presently. Because in, her, in the school that the son attends, they have just put the LGBTQ lessons on the curriculum. And she was chosen, she was chosen by the parents to write to the school to express their disgust. But she went on to say when she saw the flyer on Facebook, it brought her hope. She felt a sense of pride and belonging because she remember when she came here in the early 70s or when her parents came here, what they went through with racism and classism and prejudice and how they will mock them about how they dress and how they hair look. She said it brought her a sense of pride. But she said that she doesn't want to address the people. She want to hear it from me. Why are we lighting the Empire State Building? I said, there's an overarching reason. And the reason being to commemorate our independence anniversary. But sharply something came to my mind and I said to her, the universe is a vast place. The United States of America is but a speck in the universe. But the Americans, they traveled in the universe, landed on the moon, and planted their flag as a symbol, as a significance that anyone coming here and see this, they will know the name of the United States of America. I say, I liken that experience or that, or that accomplishment to what we are doing here. America is a vast land. St. Vincent is but a speck in comparison to the great United States. But our people are here. They're making the contribution, solid contribution. We bring our culture, we bring our brains, and we are, we are, we are making such significant contribution. And I likened it to that. When we light the Empire State Building, the world who we are exposed to will know that there is a people from a small place called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are here and we must be counted. I would like to express personally how happy I am and how grateful I am to be receiving the kind of support that I am getting across the board. I came here and I was uncertain as to how I would be accepted here in New York, but I can tell you, when I met Cheryl and Lavon and Voda and Miss Friday, you name it, when I met these people and the organizations and everybody just willing to come on board and help, I can't do it alone. Anything that we do here must be us. What we are doing this week with the ceremony and the lighting, I'm pulling people, they're involved. I am not here to be the best council general, but to be the best person that I can be. So on behalf of my staff, Olson, Waveney is not here, Bernadette is not here, council general, of St. Lucia, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate you. Ambassador, thank you for coming all the way from Washington. Ambassador King, always there supporting. My family is here supporting. On behalf of myself, my staff, 
the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I would like to wish you happy 43rd anniversary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Consul General. We're coming down very nicely. At this time, we'll have a hymn, the glorious things of thee are spoken, after which Pastor Ronald John will come to do the introduction of participating clergy. And we're going to um, skip over the introduction of participating clergy because we did that when we had the intercessory prayers. We had Pastor Doreen Grant from Trinity Methodist, Peter Barnard is not here, Pastor Ronald Bailey, Abundant Life Christian Church, and Bishop Robert Yearwood. So we'll um, forego that. At this time, we'll do the next hymn, And Can It Be, after which 
Mr. Crispin M. Fry, the chairperson of the Church Service Committee, will come to give the vote of thanks. And the candidate.
afternoon, we have a situation where a car is blocking someone who has to go to work. Uh, the plate number is HNR568. HNR568. The person would like to leave, so if you're blocking, the, please go and remove your car. Thank you. It is indeed a good and wonderful occasion for me to stand before you and do the vote of thanks. Since protocol has already been established, I will go right into my responsibility. Let me first give God thanks for this opportunity to celebrate the 43rd independence of the nation, of our heritage, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Pastor Marias Crisico, the senior pastor of this St. Mark's United Methodist Church, I am eternally grateful for you allowing us to use your sanctuary to praise God for the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you very much. of the anthems of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the United States was done by Erlin Williams King and Alisa Seals. And in both forms, they were very well done, and we thank them very much for using their skills. <laughs> the scripture readings, which is very important in uh, us as exercising our Christian heritage, were performed by Deanna Grant and Ajani Liverpool. Thank you for reading the scripture readings. And the preaching the word was by Pastor Dorit Stevens. He was very elaborate in letting us to remember and realize that we must always remember the land of our heritage and always continue to do so by passing it on to the younger generation. Thank you very much, Pastor Stevens. The St. Mark's United Methodist Chancel Choir, you have been remarkable. We enjoyed the song and we thank you for your participation in this service. Thank you. For the presentation of the flags, the South Rivers United Progressive Organization processed with the flags in and Club St. Vincent will recess with the flags as we process out. I thank you for contributing your membership of those two organizations in the presentation of the flag of the USA and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you. I want to say thanks to all of the participating priests and pastors from the various churches in the Vincentian diaspora. I thank you in one form or another, whatever you have done in the performance in the worship at this service. Thank you. I want to acknowledge the members of the church service committee at this time, so I will call their names and I hope that they will stand. Mr. Cyril N. Thomas, Mrs. Laverne McDowell Thompson, Mrs. Ansela Friday, Mrs. Diana Grant, Mrs. Petula Kwame Kamijang, Mrs. Ingrid Scrub. Mrs. Rosalyn Goodluck, and your humble servant, Crispin Friday, as the chairperson. Thank you. I must say that the various meetings that we had in trying to organize this service were very good and very successful, and that's why we have uh, this event today. At this point in time, I would like to thank the congregation for attending because without your attendance here, we will not have this event. So thank you for being here. We thank God for the 43rd anniversary of independence of our nation, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. <laughs> Following the worship session, there is a reception in the hall downstairs, and I invite you to go to the hall 
and enjoy some reception refreshments and make the best. Most of the items are packaged, so if you don't want to stay, you just pick up the package and you can leave. But I encourage you to please go to the, the hall and enjoy your time, and you can meet someone who you didn't see for a long time and have some social exchange. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Before I leave, I would like to acknowledge the performance of our Oscar Stevenson, our choir director. Thank you for your skills with us. Thank you. Okay, at this time, we're going to um, have the hymn, How Great Thou Art, followed by the benediction by Canon Leopold Baines of James Corona Queens, who will come after the hymn is sung.
just before the benediction, let me make a correction. I no longer work at Grace Church in Corona. I retired from there in 2015. Since I'm the oldest surgery project here. Okay? So I retire and I go around and help my friends when they have to go out. I was at Crispin Friday's church this morning doing two Eucharist, two in my retirement. <laughs> and I'm here this evening. Anyhow, let us pray and ask God's uh, blessings upon us for a very good uh, time together, worshiping uh, and praising Almighty God uh, for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, political independence from Great Britain. Heavenly Father, as we make ready to go to our homes, we thank you for all your goodness and your loving kindness to us, not only today, but at all times. Because, Father, without you, we are nothing. So as we go to our homes, let not your presence depart from us it will take us safely to our homes and in the morning wake us up to continue to worship you again. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, upon your homes and your loved ones this night and forevermore. Amen. 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 Good afternoon again. Before we leave this place, I just have to correct a om major omission that I did in the expressing my vote of thanks. I have to acknowledge the work uh, that the liturgist, Dr. Roxy Iris Morris, performed. Thank you. And I also want to acknowledge the videographers, Gans Byron and Hales Castello. Thank you. At this time, we have the recession of the flags by the Club St. Vincent, Inc. And then we have the closing hymn, I Vow to Thee, My Country. <laughs> 